Are you wondering what it's like to study and sit the CASA CPL meteorology exam? In this video, I'll tell you the materials I used, how I studied, my experience in the test, and some tips and tricks. Welcome to Spruce Moose Aviation. So I decided to self-study all of the seven CASA exams and chose meteorology to sit first, um, mainly because I thought I'd be really interested in it and I could stay focused and hopefully get a good mark. Uh, but yeah, the materials I used were aviation theory textbook was the main one. The AIP, which you'll need for a lot of exams, but you'll you'll need it for meteorology as well. I used uh, pilot practice exams online, which were a massive help, especially for me. The way that I like to learn really helped um, with chopping and changing from the textbook to doing practice exams online. You can do them on your phone, you can do them you know, on a break at work, whenever you can find time to, to knock out a quick exam. Uh, and then you can look at your deficiencies and go back to the textbook. When I started getting higher marks on the practice exams, I used Bob Tate exams online as well. So they are a little bit pricey and you only get four exams. I think three of them you can resit over and over again and then one is used as, I guess, a template or an example for a CASA exam where it's timed and you can't resit it. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how they structured the four exams that you get in the package. The way I like to study, and it might help, might be a bit of a tip, is I'll show you here. As I'm reading through the theory and the text, I actually highlight the sections that I believe are important or the sections within each paragraph that I want to stand out for when I'm revising. So I think it also helps me when I'm highlighting to take the, the information on board a lot better as well. So instead of just skimming over the information and reading all the time, the action of highlighting it actually helped me retain or I felt like it helped me retain um, a lot of the information. So yeah, try it out and see if that works for you. Uh, but what I do is generally read, I started off by reading the book all the way through and then I'd use pilot practice exams to get, I guess, my first baseline of where my knowledge was at. And I'll show you on the screen, but with pilot practice exams, you can actually, uh, you get a report at the end of each uh, test. And I definitely recommend noting, or if you're on your phone, screenshotting the questions that you're getting wrong, and then put together a bit of a picture once you've done a few of the, the practice exams, where your deficiencies are then come back to the book as well. So every time I'd come back to the book, I wouldn't read the, the whole book through. I'd focus on those deficiency areas within each test and it'd be a cycle for me. So I'd jump from the book to doing maybe three or four practice exams and then come back to the book and focus on those deficiencies. What I also recommend is um, pilot practice exams have a tagging guide for your AIP and it'll explain the rules about taking the material into CASA, how many tags you can use, and it'll give you a really good reference on, um, I think it's 15 tags that you can use as, as a maximum. Another tip for using the AIP is actually get the tagging guide early on in your study and really go through the AIP, tag the sections that are recommended, read those sections, and then when you come across in your practice exams online, when you come across uh, you know, something that relates to one of those tags, practice finding it quickly in the AIP so that when you're in the, the CASA exam, you, you've got sort of muscle memory of, okay, yeah, and I remember where that section is, go straight to it and double check. What I did like to do was double check, even if I was 90% sure that, yeah, you know, that was the correct answer. I'd still quickly just double check. Uh, yeah, it's a little, little tip for you as well. And then um, after I was getting consistently uh, 80, you know, 80 to 95, 100% on some of these tests on the pilot practice exams, that's when a friend told me about the online, the Bob Tate exams. 
and there's pros and cons they are they are expensive you only get four exams but i do feel like while the the pilot practice exams are, are really good for the ongoing study the um, early stages of your study and refining majority of your knowledge the bob tate exams are written a bit more similar to the CASA exams. Um, so the questioning, the ambiguous questions that CASA like to throw in there are very similar. I believe, I heard a rumor that Bob Tate actually used to write for CASA, I don't know if that's true. So the questions and the style of writing uh, are fair, I found were fairly similar. I'll try and show you a screenshot now, but the structure of the test is similar to the, the CASA portal that you, you'll use. And he also has a flagging system um, in his online exams, the same or similar to what you would get in a CASA exam. Now the flagging system is, if you're unsure about a question, then you can flag it and move on. And then that way you can jump back to it. So you can look, uh, I think there's a left-hand column that you can look at and within your exam, you can go, okay, I've, I've got through my 30 or 40 questions, but I've flagged five, six, 10, uh, and I'll go back and quickly review them. You might want to um, put an answer in that you believe is correct, and then go back and just double check some of those answers. Okay, so I'm gonna jump in and give you my result now instead of at the end of the video, because there's a couple of things that I wanna talk about after I give you my result. Okay, so this is my result here. Seventy-nine percent. So yeah, seventy-nine percent is a pass. Uh, you do need seventy percent to pass the test, and I believe for all seven except for air law. So air law, you do need eighty percent to pass, uh, but everything else is seventy percent. Correct me if I'm wrong. The reason that I wanted to also bring this up halfway through the video is I actually sat this test back on the 1st of July, 2020. And I haven't sat another test since. Uh, if you watch my first video about my aviation journey so far, that'll give you a bit of an idea of why. I'm back on board now. The next test is going to be uh, AGK. So I'm studying for that now and you'll see the video soon with that result. But yeah, one of seven out of the way, uh, done and dusted. I have uh, some KDRs, so uh, a key deficiency report and basically um, the idea behind the KDRs is you should have a hundred percent knowledge of all seven subjects so the tests have a pass mark and then uh, they give you a key deficiency report on the areas within that subject that you need to brush up on and you actually have to submit that to an instructor which has to be done prior to going for your flight test for your commercial license. So another tip that I've heard with these is to try and get each KDR, you can get them done along the way with each test. So you can submit your KDR report to your instructor and get those ticked off because if you leave them until the end, you'll need to brush up on all of the knowledge that um, you're missing along each seven exams right before your flight test. So yeah, try and tick those off along the way. Uh, but I'll quickly go through the KDRs that I receive, given that I've got uh, basically 80%. There are a few here that surprised me that I wasn't too happy about, but yeah, I'll run through them. So stability, so um, basically the stability of the atmosphere. So I thought I was okay at that, but obviously I missed a few questions on stability. This one hurt, interpret TAF. So I'd never had issues with TAFs before um, or through uh, my earlier licenses and I I still think I'm fairly decent at reading a TAF. But yeah, obviously I think I might have missed a question there um, that involved um, TAFs and yeah, I think I should be fine with that KDR, but I'll, I'll yeah, see how we go. Thunderstorms and microbursts. Can't say much about that one. Um, mountain waves, fond winds. Uh, inversions and fog. I think I did struggle a little bit with the inversions 
and the reactions of say if you're flying through a certain type of inversion and how the aircraft would react through layers and things like that. So, uh, synoptic meteorology, um, so the charts, synoptic charts and air masses and fronts. So yeah, they were all my KDRs. I think um, it should be fairly easy to, to brush up on those and, and get those over the line for meteorology. Something else that I wanted to bring up in regards to the test was that uh, there was only 30 questions in the test that I sat and no one else that I'd spoken to, I didn't sit it on the day, I didn't sit it with anybody I knew, um, but afterwards I spoke to a couple of students that I trained with earlier and friends and uh, yeah, they said no, they, they had 40 questions. So I guess the tip for that is just to be prepared on, on the subject as much as you can, which I believe if you follow the other tips that I've given you in this video, you should still be fine. I was, I still passed. Someone mentioned that CASA like to test uh, different layouts or different types of testing and they can do it at any time. So um, all it's all the same subject. So I think you'd still be fine, but yeah, just be just be ready for little curveballs like that and take it in your stride and as long as you've studied the correct way then i'm sure you'll be fine i'll leave some links in the description below to pilot practice exams and the bob tape online as well and if you'd like to subscribe you can use the logo on this side or also links to videos so i've got uh, my first video gives you a bit of uh, idea about the journey that i've taken so far in aviation and just a random video I think we'll put up the top as well. So I'll see you in the next one.